Okay, so one of the beautiful consequences of the circle packing theorem is that it readily implies the planar separator theorem. So we have a we are given a planar graph and uh, assume that it's triangulated, namely all the faces are triangles. If it's this is not true, you can always just add edges until it's fully triangulated. This does not affect the the separators we are going to uh, compute. And what is a separator? A separator is just a set of vertices, hopefully small, such that if you remove it, it breaks up the graph into uh, several connected components, such that every connected component has at most two-thirds fraction of the vertices, or some other fraction, constant fraction, of the top, uh, total number of vertices. And it turns out, in fact, that one can prove even a stronger variant showing that if the graph is triangulated, the separator is going to be a cycle, right? It's going to be a cycle in the graph, so that if you remove the cycle, it breaks up the graph into those um, uh, two or more parts, as we know. Okay, so given this uh, 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 planar graph, we look on its realization as uh, circle packing, use using the circle packing theorem. We take the center of every uh, disk in this packing, and this gives us a, a cloud of points. Now, for this cloud of points, we go and we compute the smallest disk that contains, let's say, one eighth fraction of the points. Um, and we are going to assume that the radius of this disk is one, because if it's not one, we can always scale the plane so that it becomes one. And now we double this disk, right? So we look on the same disk with twice the radius with the same center. And this gives us an analysis of radius 1. And in this analysis of radius 1, we randomly go and choose a ring that has a radius between 1 and 2. And uh, now we go back to the, the circle packing, and we take all the circle that intersect the ring and those are corresponding, of course, to uh, uh, vertices in the original graph. And those vertices are going to be our separator sets. Right? Now, uh, in fact, if the graph is triangulated, then this uh, set of this corresponding to this circle is going to be just a cycle in this graph, which is easy to verify. So we get the cycle separator uh, result. Now, of course, we need to argue both that the, this cycle breaks up the graph into two connected components such that uh, uh, each are of the most constant fraction of the uh, original uh, graph. And the second thing is to, of course, show that this um, uh, separator is made out of a few vertices. Okay, a and in particular, if I just remove the cycle and all the vertices on the cycle and on the edges adjacent to them, I get this breakup into those two connected Okay, so uh, let's start with the easier claim that this is a balanced separator. So to this end, observe that the enlarged disk of radius 2 can be covered by 7 copies uh, of a disk of radius 1. Each one of those copies can contain at most an eighth fraction of the points because the... Um, you know, we pick the original disk to be the smallest one containing such an eighth fraction of the point. So none of those disks can contain more than one eighth fraction of the points. Okay, so now what happened is that um, this implies that the flower, this flower formed by the seven disks, can cover at most seven eighths of the point, which means that there is at least one eighth fraction of the point inside and outside the analysis, and as such, the red ring separates the point set into uh, balanced uh, 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 points. Uh, each portion have at least one eighth fraction of the points. Okay. Um, the more interesting uh, uh, question is why is this um, separator have few vertices? So the idea is to look on disks in the in the circle packing and ask 
what's the probability that they're going to be in a separate? So the idea is that, you know, um, if a disk has radius r, then uh, the radius of the ring has to be in a specific uh, interval of length 2r for the ring to intersect the disk. And the, the disk is in the separator if and only if the ring intersects it. Right? So that suggests a very natural thing to do. We are going to split the graph into we're going to split the, the disk in this disk packing and uh, such and such in the graph into two classes, small vertices, small disks, and large disks. Small disks are going to have radius smaller than, let's say, uh, one over close n. Big disks are going to have a radius bigger than this expression. And now the idea is that uh, all the small disks, each one of them has probability 2 over squared n to be in a separator. There are n such disks and as such the expected number of small disks intersecting the separating ring is going to be the product of those two quantities and that's going to be all squared n. So the number of, uh, the expected number of small disks is small. Now, uh, what about the big disks, right? So what we are going to do, we are going to sprinkle a guard on a, a ring that is just outside the, the ring that we picked, right? So take the ring and uh, enlarge it radius by an additive term of, let's say, 1 over square root n, and on this outer ring, put ri uh, guards that are indifferent, let's say, 1 over square root n away from each other. Okay? And do the same thing on an inner ring, which is, again, going to be 1 over square root n away, and put guards that are in distance 1 over square root n away. Right? So this clearly gives us a, a set of all square root n guards, because the radius of the ring is somewhere between 1 and 2. And the important thing is that one can argue that any uh, big disk that intersects the separating ring must contain one of the guards on it. Right? Now, since the disks in the circle packing are disjoint, interior disjoint, every guard can be charged at most once uh, uh, for stabbing uh, such a big disk that intersects the separating ring which implies that the number of big disks intersecting the separating ring is at most the number of guards, which is all squared n. And now we are done, right? Because we just argued that there are most of square root n um, uh, big disks intersecting the separating ring, and in expectation there are square root n small rings that intersect uh, the separating ring, and adding those two quantities together means that in expectation the number of uh, um, uh, vertices in the separator is going to be all square root n. Okay. And if you want, um, you know, you can uh, convert it into a statement that, you know, um, with probability at least half by Markov's inequality, this random algorithm will generate a separator of these at most all square root n vertices. So this is a constructive algorithm once you have the, circ the, the circle packing realizing the, the graph. Okay. So let me tell you a little bit about the history of those two uh, theorems. So the circle packing theorem was uh, described by Tersman in a talk in uh, um, 85, and he wanted the theorem to construct uh, conformal mappings between two open sets in the plane. Um, and so he essentially proved this theorem in his talk, or sketched the proof in his talk. And he observed that this results also follow from the work of Andreev. And a few years later, it came to light that, in fact, Paul Koebe already proved this, uh, uh, this result in 36. Uh, it's kind of surprising that this result was uh, forgotten because uh, uh, Paul Kobe was, uh, in fact, a reasonably well-known mathematician for his time. But, you know, it was in the mid-30s in Germany. A lot of other stuff was going on. Um, and uh, it seems from the German Wikipedia page of Paul Kobe that he was a, a quite an interesting guy. Okay, as far as... Uh, 
the plan of separator of three uh, theorem. So it was proved in page 51 by uh, Ungar, and um, the proof that uh, we usually are aware of is the result due to Lipton and Parajan from the late 70s. Uh, the geometric proof I showed you is inspired by the work of Miller et al. And uh, the cycle separator result is due to Miller from the mid-80s. 